Hi, I'm TJ Savarino. I work for Clemson University as a forestry and wildlife extension agent. Uh, I'm here today at the Carolina Sandhills National Wildlife Refuge with some friends of mine who are also longleaf enthusiasts. And uh, the reason we're here is that when we do programs on longleaf, we get a lot of questions about how to identify the ground cover plant species that are associated with the longleaf ecosystem. Well, the longleaf ecosystem is a, uh, covers a, quite a geographic range and a difference in uh, soil types and moisture amounts in the soil. Uh, so the, the vegetation that's associated with those areas varies a bit as well. Today we're going to focus on the xeric sand hills that are found here at the refuge and uh, we're going to try and show you some of the more common species that are associated with it. In this introductory video, part one, we will take a broad overview of the xeric longleaf pine community, including the biotic and abiotic factors that shape it. In other videos, parts two and three, we will take a closer look at some of the individual understory species. I'm Lisa Lord with the Longleaf Alliance. I am the, the Alliance's Conservation Program Director. Um, one of the most uh, notable and characteristic things about the longleaf ecosystem is the ground cover. There's an incredible diversity of uh, species, forbs and legumes and asters that are found uh, in the ground cover. Um, so we're in the xeric sand hills, there's many different types of natural communities in the longleaf ecosystem, but the xeric sand hills are characterized by sandy soils, uh, rolling topography, and a suite of species that we'll talk about today. The diversity of ground cover in the longleaf ecosystem is represented primarily by three major families, and those are the grasses, the asters, and the lagoons. And we've got representations of, of two of those right here in this spot in front of me. Um, the asters represented here by the liatris and pityopsis with the yellow flower and the silvery leaves uh, are very important uh, from a standpoint of providing um, pollinator resources. Um, a lot of pollinators will really flock to these flowers uh, when they're in bloom. They, import, they uh, provide important energy reserves for those species. Um, and then the other species, or the other group that is infringing on my personal space here, uh, are the grasses. And this is wiregrass in particular. And in this part of the state, this would be uh, the northern wiregrass. Uh, the grasses are important because they uh, provide that fine fuel that is necessary to carry fire across the landscape. Longleaf is a very fire dependent ecosystem and uh, you need something to be able to carry the fire. Now in, in the sand hills you don't always have the most fertile soils and if the trees are spaced far apart the, the leaf litter that you see on the ground here may not be dense enough to carry the fire contiguously across the landscape. So these grasses provide that fine flashy fuel that uh, helps to supplement that and complement the the fuel that's available through the pine straw. So asters are another important part of the longleaf ecosystem ground cover. So I have two representatives here of the family Asteraceae. So this is a solidago or goldenrod, uh, and this is a eupatorium. And both of these um, are genera are well represented throughout the longleaf ecosystem found in every community. Um, and also there are a lot of different species of these uh, of solidagos and eupatoriums. So they're usually found in open areas Areas, areas that have been recently disturbed uh, through fire or other means, um, and they're important also because they provide uh, food for pollinators. The other family that is uh, very widely re uh, represented in the longleaf ecosystem are the legumes. Now, these are plants in the bean family. Um, they produce flowers uh, that are attractive to a lot of different pollinators when they're blooming. Then they produce seed pods of some type and those seed pods contain seeds that are very high in protein. That's because the legumes are uh, atmospheric nitrogen fixers. So they can exist in these poor soils that are found in the sand hills because they don't rely on the nitrogen that's uh, available in the soil. Um, because they are able to fix nitrogen, their foliage is high in protein, which makes them a, a sought after browse by deer and other species. 
um, and the seeds are very persistent, very hard coated, so they will stay in the soil for a very long time and provide a source of new plants in the seed bank. And uh, that is if they survive being sought after by uh, birds such as the bobwhite quail uh, and other birds who, who relish the seeds because of their, uh, the protein that they contain. So the black char you see here on this longleaf pine tree is from fire or a prescribed fire specifically. So the refuge uses fire to maintain the longleaf habitat here. And fire is really a critical tool and probably the most important tool for maintaining the longleaf ecosystem. So fire helps to keep the woody encroachment away, um, promotes the, the ground cover and the diversity. And without fire, the habitat would look a lot different. So you would have woody trees grow, uh, and the habitat would change, and many of the species, uh, the animals and plants that we find here would no longer be here. In the absence of fire, you see the, you have re-sprouting. Uh, we've determined that uh, this stand was burned approximately three years ago based on the uh, bud breaks on these stems. And so it doesn't take long for the turkey oak to start to fill back in from the root sprouts. Fire doesn't kill these plants, it just top kills them. And unless all the resources from the roots are eventually depleted, they will continue to re-sprout. Um, but eventually what will happen if you were not to burn in this stand is these trees would continue to grow and as the canopies would close in on those plants, it would shade out a lot of the ground cover in here and these plants would start to disappear or drop out. So fire is important for maintaining that, um, that openness and allowing that sunlight to get to the forest floor and keeping these plants in an earlier, earlier successional stage. Hey, I'm Sudi Thomas, and I'm a wildlife biologist with the Natural Resources Conservation Service. And I'm standing out here in this diverse longleaf pine forest with this great understory full of legumes and wildflowers and grasses. And um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the conservation programs through the Farm Bill that landowners can apply for and use on the land to enhance their habitat. The Natural Resources Conservation Service, part of the USDA, has a longleaf pine initiative prioritizing the longleaf resource for conservation funding through the Farm Bill. The longleaf pine initiative enables NRCS to work with private landowners in nine states to improve the sustainability and profitability of longleaf pine forest ecosystems. NRCS provides technical and financial assistance to implement beneficial conservation practices. These practices enable landowners to improve natural habitats through prescribed burning, establishing longleaf and other native trees and shrubs, establish native wildflowers and grasses, and many other conservation practices. Landowners benefit from healthy timber, reduced wildfire risk, and improved wildlife habitats. NRCS has also recognized beneficial insects, pollinators, and monarch butterflies as priority animals for which to restore, enhance, and protect habitat. Improving and restoring florally diverse open longleaf habitats like those found in the sandhills enhances resources needed by beneficial insects. Longleaf ground cover offers pollen, nectar, larval host plants, and nest sites for bees, butterflies, monarchs, and many other beneficial insects, many of which are experiencing population declines. Learning to identify the plant species we're going to show will help landowners monitor project successes. Contact the staff at your nearest USDA service center for more details.